Hi, I'm Wes from JW Sports and Apparel. A lot of people, and I'm going to give a shout out to Thomas Flowers. We talked about this. We did story time at JW Sports and Apparel. We try to do this when it sort of dies down and let everybody just have some fun and tell stories about what went on at the University of Georgia and stuff that we've never heard of. So it's going to be some good stories. So let's go here. Rennie Kern, you're, you're up. All right, I got a story. So. Back in 2013 or 14, I'm a young kid coming out of Brookwood High School, Snellville, Georgia. I'm not on anybody's radar. I'm not being recruited recruited at all. I'm just a short linebacker out of out of Brookwood High School. 2003. 2003. Oh, was it 2000? Oh yeah, 2003. Yeah. See, it's been so long. Yeah. See, I, see, too many hits to the head. Uh, back to story time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need to. Yeah. So 2003. Go back, way, way back. So 2003, I'm a young kid coming out of Snellville, Georgia, out of Brookwood High School. I'm not on anybody's radar. Uh, and so my little league coach, Ronnie Benton, takes me to my first. He, he was the one to take me to my uh, first Georgia game and uh, was with me the whole entire recruiting process, even before my recruiting process started. So. I had one coach at Brookwood, Dickie May, who coached at uh, the Kula High School, my, most, uh, my linebackers coach. So he connected me to Des Williams, who was the fullback, who was 35. All right, so I, I end up sneaking into practice through Coach May's uh, connection to Des. So I get there, I'm this annoying little kid, <laughs> and uh, I got my Timberland boots on. <laughs> I got, a, I got a thick hoodie on, you know, just trying to look big. So, you know, Coach Rick can notice me or somebody can notice me, right? So we get there. I get into the spring ball practice. And first guy, no lie, that I see is Leonard Pope that walks up. I'm on the sideline. And uh, it, it was crazy. Like, I had never seen a human being that big. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I don't think I'm going to ever play at, at UGA. Like, that's, that's, that's crazy. And then not too long after, this big ass Joker walks up. Like, hey. I get the story. Man. Yeah, he in the story. He didn't even know it, but he, he walks up just talking smack, and then like maybe like ten minutes later, I don't know if you remember this, but they had a big ass brawl. We talked about it last. They yeah. talked about it last time. Yeah. They had this big ass brawl. I'm just on the sideline, like man, I I I'm definitely not playing in college. Like, <laughs> this is what this is like. Like I'm I'm probably never gonna play, and I was just traumatized, man. <laughs> and then like yeah. After that, man, I, I would come up there like, like I don't know if y'all remember, man, but I would come up there like every other week to the point where they would get, they would be like, man, aren't you supposed to be in school right now? <laughs> like they'll be clowning me, man. But um, I, I remember those days like yesterday. That's what kind of got me on their radar, just being out there, um, getting to know these guys before I was even being recruited, before I had any stars, and um, you know the rest is history, man. So I'll never forget those moments. Humble beginnings. No dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Boots, man. Yeah. And see, uh, that's what it is. JNW Sports, we always do the story time, and people really love what we do here. And uh, I just love these guys for actually telling stories. Anybody else got another story? I got a Sean Bailey story. Uh oh. Hey. Uh oh. Hey. Okay. <laughs> he probably hates that I'm going to tell this story, but. All right, so I came in before Sean. I'm older than Sean. So when we started recruiting Sean, we had all heard about, you know, he's supposed to be big time, but we wasn't sure who he was. <laughs> One day we had a dinner at Coach Rick's house. It was might have been like summertime or something. And then we looked and saw a picture of Sean Bailey on Coach Rick refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and we remember that morning. And we remember telling all the receivers, he's gonna play in front of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we told him like, y'all ain't got a chance, man. The guy's on Coach Rick refrigerator. <laughs> And he came in and he played though. Not because he's on the refrigerator, but because <laughs> he was that good though. You know, he never talked, never said anything. Like every day I tried to make him talk. Like every day. I was like, Sean got anything to say there? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he was always about that action. He, you know, it all worked out. He was great. That's awesome. And stories like this, I mean, y'all are missing out. Y'all need to get out here. They're going to be here until the job's done is basically what they said. Uh, J&W Sports, come out here, show some love. Somebody named Matt Bricky said they went to Brookwood as well. Brookwood. Oh, that's good. And 98. Said, 98. Loved he said, love this young man. Oh, that's Was cool. so happy when he went to Georgia. He was a headhunter.
Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. That's cool. I mean, uh, and see, the stories that they keep telling. Anybody else got any stories? Because you know they love it. Yeah. Uh, you got one, Sean? I got one. He's got one. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> I had a lot of great memories at Georgia. Uh, the blackout game was, was a big one, but... My senior year uh, playing Florida, uh, we were talking about Florida a little earlier about uh -huh. how there's just, there was for real a, a curse. Uh, yeah. We would go down to Florida, we'd have the better team, but for whatever reason, we came up empty a lot of times. So in 07, our senior year, um, you know, we were tired of it, the coaches were tired of it. It was early, early in the week of the practice, and uh, people were dropping routine balls and all that stuff. So Coach Rick called us up together and said, I don't know what it is, but uh, from here on out, you know, we're going to be loose, we're going to be relaxed. Uh, he thought about it for a second. He said, as a matter of fact, he said, when we score our first touchdown, I want y'all to celebrate. And if y'all don't, um, don't get a penalty for celebration, we're going to have morning run. Mm -hmm. What Coach Rick didn't know was that the whole team was going to end up celebrating. <laughs> so, I remember that. That was awesome. So it was, a, it was a first quarter of the game. Uh, no Sean had a nice little run. He dives in and he gets in. And Coach Rick's expectation was for the guys on the field to be celebrating. But... I kid you not, the whole whole sideline came onto the field. <laughs> and as they came on the field, you saw a yellow flag, yellow flag, yellow flag. And, and that's exactly the, what we needed as a team, as a, as a Bulldog Nation. And I think from that from that point on, uh, that curse was lifted. We, ha we haven't won every game that we've gone back uh, down there, but it hasn't been a situation where we go down there uh, waiting for a mistake to happen. We, we've gone down there knowing we're going to win that game. And I think to this day, um, you know, going down to Jacksonville, it's the expectation that Georgia's going to win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great job, man. Great job. You should tell more stories. Yeah, you need to tell more stories. I, you and Thomas need to get together and start talking. <laughs> anyway, stuff like that, y'all. Uh, y'all know a little bit about it, but he had inside scoop. He was there for all the stuff of getting ready for that game. So that's what you deal with when you get down here to JNW Sports. You never know what stories they're going to tell. And I love it, and you guys say you love it every time we do it. So I, I just come down here. We're here until whenever the job is done. But if you think you're running late and I think these guys are ready to go, Y'all need to let us know because they got to get out of here. So come out, get some autographs, bark like a dog, let's have some good times, and just come out here and show some love to these guys because we've got six. Show them right here, Julie. We've got six Bulldogs here. <laughs> Nobody in, in, in the Bulldog Nation right now has got this many Bulldogs, and i got them here in Chatsworth. So come out and show some love to these guys. Because they're family, and I want to take care of family. I want to make sure that everybody gets an autograph. I know that when this is over with, they're going to leave some stuff. But a lot of times, they're so busy, they're doing other events. So y'all need to take time and actually get down here and get some more autographs. The people that came, they appreciate it. I appreciate it. Julie appreciates it. But you guys need to get down here before they have to leave. Because I don't know when the, these guys are coming back. So come down here talk to you guys very soon. Go dogs. Come and see us. Go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs>